Brilliant. Um, so hi, everybody. My name's Joe Abraham. Um, I'm Managing Director of the Learning Foundry. And as Rich has mentioned, um, I've come along today just to tell you a little bit about me and my career journey um, from being a Level 2 apprentice to Managing Director um, in just over 10 years. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I'm 31, 31 years old. Um, I started as Managing Director at 28 uh, at the Learning Foundry. Uh, and I'm originally from Bootle, so I'm a, a Bootle girl born and bred from North Liverpool, um, and I now live in St. Helens. Um, so I'm just gonna start off by, at the beginning really, and, and, and start off in, in school as my as my journey as, as it started there. So um, I went to a school called Bootle High School uh, in, in North Liverpool. It's not there anymore, it's being knocked down. Um, and I enjoyed school. I, I love going to school. I mainly went because I had a, a great set of me. So loved going, like to learn as well. Um, but I really loved going and, and seeing the girls. And um, I'd, I'd, I'd happily skip to school ev every day, mainly for the social side. Um, when you look at me, and if you've seen other managing directors, um, I'm not, I'm not really typically what, what you might see in, in a typical managing director. I wasn't necessarily academically bright at school. I, I was good at school, but I, I wasn't the, the, the cleverest person in the year, yeah. but I was always quite confident and, and, and quite bubbly. So I left school in um, 2006. Uh, I, I left school, so I left school after year 11. Uh, I planned to go to sixth form, so got GCSEs to get into sixth form. And all of me and the girls, we all planned to go to sixth form together. And then we all planned we were all going to go to university together. So whilst we had different career aspirations, we all agreed that we'd go to the same university um, and we'd all have a big party and live in a big house together. So it was all planned. Um, so on my first day of sixth form, um, at 16, first day of sixth form, I, I found out I was I was pregnant, so it wasn't it wasn't in the plan. Um, first day of sixth form, um, and, and and found out that I was going to be a mum. So that was a bit of a shock to the system. I still looked as young as I do now, and uh, looked really really young at, at sixteen, um, and and was really young now when I, when I look around. Um, but nevertheless, I um, I decided to have my son. Um, and his name's Tom, and Tom is now 14 years old. He's five foot eight, and he looks older than me, and he's absolutely amazing. Um, so I decided to, to have our Tom. Um, so I was a 17 year old mum, um, and subsequently I, I, I didn't I didn't finish sixth form. Um, so I went off and had, had our Tom. Um, so when, when our Tom was born, what I decided to do was um, enroll onto an apprenticeship. So I was unsure what to do, um, not quite sure. And, oh, sorry, I'll just um, chain my camera away. Sorry. It's always the way with um, live TV, isn't it? Um, so I, I was looking for a job, um, looking for a job as an office junior um, and thought I'm gonna go and work in, in business administration. So look for, looking for a job for months, for months and months and months. And like a lot of young people now, um, was looking for jobs, going for different interviews uh, and just wasn't successful. And fun, funnily enough, um, a few months ago, I was looking through my records of achievement and I found my first ever CV that I was trying to get those jobs with. And it was like, on it was I had like 10 of them written out with black ink on lime paper while I was going at 17 to try and get jobs and was dead dead unsuccessful and they just kept saying to me you've got no experience you've got no experience and I kept saying to them I can't get a job without experience but no one will give me the job to get experience so um, I ended up talking to my dad and I was saying to my dad I just I want to do something you know, I'm, I'm not being successful at all the jobs. And my dad lived, my dad worked in a bank. He worked in what was called the Jaru Bank, which is now called Santander. And my dad said to me, there's people who, there's, there's young people who work in our work and they come Monday to Friday, nine to five, and they do their job, but they also get a qualification at the same time. And someone comes in and teaches them 
and they get a qualification and they always seem to get kept on at the end and what I didn't know then is my dad had just given me the best piece of career advice and guidance I'd ever received because even though he didn't know what he was telling me he was telling me all about apprenticeships uh, and young people going into the gyro bank and, and doing apprenticeships where you work but you earn but you learn at the same time so I went to a training company um, he, he found the name of the training company that do those apprenticeships and I went into the training company and I said I want a job in the gyro bank on an apprenticeship with my dad and he said you can't we can't just put you in there because you've came into our training company and said that's where you want to work so come on a training program with us um, come on a training program with us we'll work with you we'll help you get your CV sorted and we'll help you find an apprenticeship and less than a month later I'd got an apprenticeship in a training company. So uh, I got my foot through the door now. Uh, my apprenticeship at then was £80 a week. Um, I know you get paid more than that now. I think I, you know, some of the apprentices in our work get starting at 16 on 10 grand a year. Um, but it was £80 a week and I did my apprenticeship, which was level two business admin. And I used to work on my apprenticeship Monday to Friday, nine to five. And I used to work on a pizza hut in the night. So six till ten, I was working Pizza Hut and all day on a Saturday. And I look back now and I think, oh my gosh, and you had a son as well. And you were nine to five, Monday to Friday in Pizza Hut and, and, and you've got your, you had your Tom. But I did it because that's what I needed to do. And after doing my first apprenticeship, my first year of my apprenticeship, I got a promotion. So I got, I progressed on to my next level, my level three apprenticeship in business administration. And with my promotion, I was able to leave Pizza Hut. So I just had the one job then uh, to really focus on my career and to cut it short I went to that training company and went on a short pre-apprenticeship program and I progressed into an apprenticeship I then went to work for a training company that worked with young people and helped them get ready to move into apprenticeships and then progress them into apprenticeships so for six years and um, from doing this apprenticeship to getting kept on as a permanent member of staff for six years I worked in, in my first training company called ABC Training um, and at that time I did my teacher training so I was able to become a teacher as well at the same time so you see lots of people who say to become a teacher um, I've got to go to university and that's right in a lot of ways to be a primary school teacher or a high school teacher you do go to university but you can also become a teacher by working in a training company like the one I work at and then doing your teacher training alongside it, whether that be a degree or not a degree, um, it's just another route in. So I worked there for six years, did my teacher training uh, and then I went and worked at another company afterwards um, for a few years uh, in St Helens, which is why I live here now. Um, and on that in, in that company, so I've done my apprenticeships up to level three and then when I went into that next company, um, I progressed into a management position. So they put me through a management apprenticeship. So I did my management level three apprenticeship and I did my management level five apprenticeship um, in, in leadership and management. And what I did was by using those apprenticeships, I learned new skills, uh, learned knowledge, put them into practice, and then was able to progress and develop my career. Um, and at 20, 26, I became the director of the, the job I was on. And what was really great at that point is I'd use apprenticeship from level two to level five management to move from an apprentice to the director of training in that company. And then in 2019, I joined the Lane and Foundry as managing director. And I always tell this story because um, when, I, when I went for that job as managing director at the Lane and Foundry, I was 28 years old. Um, I had been a director at in St Helens for a while, but I'd never been to college. I'd never been to university. Um, I did my four apprenticeships, and when I went for the job at the Lane and Foundry in 2019, I got there, and there was nine other people going for the job, and we had to all do like an assessment day together. And when I walked in that room, little Joanne Abraham from Bootle who got some GCSEs but never managed to go to college or uni with a mate. By the way, they all went to Manchester and at the time of the last as well, um, which is fabulous. And I used to go and visit on weekends when I could. Um, so I, I walked in for the interview, the, the, the assessment day that day, and I thought, oh, my gosh, we had people who were like principals of colleges, 
executive directors and I walked in and I thought oh gosh I don't belong here like I'm in this room but all these people are death experienced and oh my gosh they've got principals here who've ran colleges with 10,000 students and I'm going for this job as managing director and part of me thought should I just leave should I just go because you well are your league here Joe and don't waste your day maybe just go around the little one and do some shopping but I stayed through the day um, and there was 10 of us going for that job and I was the least experienced I was the one with the least amount of experience for the job that day in my opinion um, and by two o'clock I'd made it to the final three and those people who I would have put as front runners being having the experience, they never got shortlisted for the job because what I didn't realise is when the learning foundry were looking for a managing director, it wasn't just the experience and the knowledge they were looking for, it was the people with the right values, it was the people who were going to be great at teamwork, have dead good customer service, be really ambitious and just have a good time as well um, whilst they're trying to make this business great. Um, by five o'clock, I'd got the job and I, well, I, I was the successful candidate and I had to pinch myself because I thought, oh my gosh, against all of them people, I'd, I'd got the job. And when I'm talking to anyone in career sessions, it's always the number one point that I always want to make because there's been so many times I've gone for the job and I'm being the least experienced. And at first, when I was trying to get my foot in the door, being the one with the least experience is why all them people wouldn't give me the job once I'd got my foot in the door and started working with the right businesses nobody ever looked at my experience and progressed my career so when you look at teamwork you look at customer service you look at being ambitious and determined and being a kind person all of those things you can be you don't need 25 years experience to be a nice person or to have good customer service and want to do nice things so I always try and tell anyone who I ever meet they would ever be scared to go for anything. Even if you're going to get the knockback, it's not that that could be more about them than you. But never, ever let anything hold you back because you don't feel like you've got the experience because there's good people out there who will who will um, see you for who you are and they will give you the skills. And people we work with say, we work with businesses every day and I'll tell you about that in a second. We work with businesses every single day to help young people and adults get into jobs. And they never, they're not looking for experience, they're looking for that right person who they can shape and who they can mould and who will have the right attitude and, and, and the right um, ambitions. And that businesses are quite happy to teach you themselves. So that's, so I just wanted to tell you that story because that's how I came to be managing director at the Learning Foundry, not because I was the most experienced in the room, the most knowledgeable or had the most skills. It was because they just thought I was like this little pocket rocket that would run around and have a dead good time. So I work at the Learning Foundry, um, I'm managing director there, and we're based on Renshaw Street, so right in the heart of, of Liverpool City Centre. Um, and what we do is we work with both young people and adults and the aim and to help them achieve their fullest potential. So part of the team, uh, including myself, go out looking for job opportunities, apprenticeship opportunities for both young people and adults. And then we have a team of excellent teachers who will deliver training and qualifications and employment programs that then help young people and adults then be matched into those jobs. And then once you're in those jobs, we'll then come and deliver an apprenticeship to you, just like I got for me, to help you then progress through your career. So training and employment programs to get in the job and then apprenticeship to help progress through that job. Um, and we have the privilege of working with amazing amazing businesses and amazing young people and adults to put them together and, and help make their talent shine so there's two routes in really um businesses will will constantly be coming to us with apprenticeship vacancies so vacancies in dental nurse and childcare, housing and uh, lots of different vacancies and when someone comes to the learning foundry we'll either match you straight into that apprenticeship or if you need help with your CV or your interview skills or your confidence, or you might need a qualification at level two in dental, because we think that's the best thing before you go and study dental at level three, we'll provide those training and qualifications for you and then help you into that chosen career. Um, so we get we, we have the we have the absolute luxury um, of, of doing that every day. And there's loads of good, bad and ugly that comes with that. We have to. We, we have government funding, so that's hard sometimes trying to find the right funding to help people. Um, 
but loads and loads of good because we can help young people help adults and then seeing them get into a job at the end and get the opportunities that someone gave me um, when I was 17 um, it, it makes it all worthwhile so it's absolutely uh, amazing and that's what I do on, on a daily basis and um, I got into my job so when I was in school if you'd have said to me what do you want to be I'd have said I either want to be an accountant and work with money or I want to be a teacher and I feel in my job I've really fulfilled my ambitions because I work for a company that teaches people I was just teaching this morning and um, so I get still get to do that so work in a company that does teach them but it's a lot to do with funding and numbers so I do feel like an accountant sometimes as well as managing director with all of the finances to manage um and I think the big thing for me is um for young people and um, you know we go to schools and a lot a lot of our advice and guidance is about going to college and going to uni go to college and go to uni and what I would say is I, I think that's great as well and for lots of people going to college and going to uni is the right thing to do all of my friends went to uni and they've got dead good jobs and they had a great time and that was the right thing for them but never discount apprenticeships um I thought I was going to go to college and uni and my circumstances meant that I weren't going to go um, I did an apprenticeship and I look at, I say to people look at me today I've got a fantastic job I love coming every day I have the best time I never went to college and uni but I've still got a dead good job my route was just a little bit different so when you're stuck and you don't know what to do or where to go you've got companies like thrive and like the learning foundry where we can help you and if college and uni is the right thing for you then that's great but there's also apprenticeship opportunities and even if your road's a little bit different apprenticeships can absolutely still get you to the same place um my friend's daughter is 18 and she's just been um accepted into merseyside police through an apprenticeship so she's now got all the uniform, she's on the beat and she signs up through a degree apprenticeship. Teaching, you can do your teaching degree through an apprenticeship. So there's loads and loads of routes. Um, and the good thing is, it's just, I have no debt. Um, so I've got this great job. Um, I'm gonna carry on doing apprenticeships. I'm gonna go into a degree apprenticeship next. Um, the good thing is, is work will pay for it and not me. So that's just a little bit about about my story and my journey, uh, and I'll take any questions if that's okay. That's great, cheers, Joe. Does anyone have any questions? Do you want me to start things off? So while well, if everyone's having a little bit of a think, I'll ask. Um, you might have covered it earlier on, but um, what advice would you give to any young people wanting to get into your position? Oh yeah, fab. So um, for any young person wanting to get into, into either the sector that I work in um, or the role that I work in, um, I've got two pieces of advice for you. The first one is the apprenticeship route is fab. And I did, I have already covered that earlier. But don't think if you don't go to college, you don't go to university, don't think that you can't be the chief executive or the managing director because it's never too late to learn. You can sign up and do, you can do customer service training, management training at any time in your career, largely funded by the government. You've just got to know where's the right place to go and that's how we can help you. But don't ever discount, discount that you can't be a managing director because you never went to college or you never got those GCSEs. Um, you can do it via other routes for learning on the job and that's really important. The other thing is, for anybody who wants to get into teaching. So there's two ways to get into teaching. You can go to college and you can go to university and that's fantastic. And you can get into teaching that way. But again, if you're sitting there and you wanna get into teaching, but you're thinking, oh, but I'm just not gonna be able to do university or I've got commitments that don't allow me to do it. You can still be a teacher. So there's two ways you can do it. You can go and get experience in a subject. So you can go and work in, childcare you could go and work in any sector that you want and become that expert and then and then once you've got that experience you can go to a training company just like just like mine at the learning foundry and then you can do your teacher training on the job so you've already gone and specialized in an area you could come and do some 
teacher training that isn't it isn't a degree route um to get into being a teacher we can always also send you to university while you're doing it so you can go and get that degree um or, but you can you can you can start at a, at a company and get them to develop you up so there's somebody on a, on on this call today who uh, is is the expert in childcare? That's why I keep talking about childcare. Is the absolute world expert in childcare? Then came into training and trained up, and then has just has just finished their degree in in teaching. So went out and got the experience in the vocation, and then did the teaching later on. But we've also got people who came to us and um have come to us and as a work from being an apprentice and then we've trained them up to be a teacher as well so please you can definitely college and university and i would never discourage anyone from going but again to get into teaching and um, if anyone has any questions give us a shout because there's ways of doing it without going to university where the skill your skills and the experience you provide to the teacher and the outcome are still exactly the same well, cheers um got a couple of questions for you now um oh, really? In regard, you forgot to hear. In regards of apprenticeships, are there any opportunities within the industry of media, film, or theatre? Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you know there are actually thousands of apprenticeships you can study? When I say thousands, I don't mean the actual opportunities. I mean the actual qualifications that you can study. Um, and you can absolutely do an apprenticeship in media, film, and theatre. And there's loads. There'll be over ten apprenticeships um, qualifications that that you can study. So if you wanted to, you could give us a shout because we don't offer that at the Lane and Foundry, but there are local training providers who will be working in that industry where we can either find the vacancies and um, and then and then get the, get the person into that, and then the training company will come and deliver the the training electrical apprenticeships there's always um the, again that's probably even even more popular and we're home, owned by a housing association and just thinking of housing associations alone i know most of them across liverpool city region take on young electrical apprentices every single year and um, so loads and loads of opportunities Football coaching, I'm not quite sure. I'll have to get back to you on that. But I definitely know there is a sports coaching one, uh, which won't just cover football, but it would cover um, it would cover mul multiple sports. But if, for example, um, we're supporting young ten young people at the moment um, in sports coaching, and what they're doing is they're going and doing their work experience in a primary school, um, doing sports coaching and PA, etc. Uh, and then they're going to do an apprenticeship with 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 schools across Wigan. So, and um, there's a there's a website called www.findapprenticeshiptraining.co.uk. Um, and if you just type in keywords there like football coaching, you'll be able to go on and see um all the apprenticeships. And then if you put your postcode in, you'll be able to see the training companies that are working with those businesses to get the vacancies and can deliver that training for you. So definitely know there's a sports coaching one, um, but not too sure about the particular football coaching one, but it wouldn't surprise me um, because there's apprenticeships in. We found one the other day, there's, you, you can actually do an apprenticeship now in um, axe throwing. So, um, there's you, you find them in all kinds of sectors. I'm me up for that one. <laughs> I know, yeah. Um, Jared, another one here. Uh, what transferable employability skills do you think are most important? Oh, okay, that's a really good question. Um, so when you're um start looking to start out in your career, there are loads and loads of skills that you can gain before you move into your sector so i would say in no particular order of importance um communication i know it sounds dead textbook and dead standard but communication and having um being approachable and having good customer service they're really important if, if you were going to ask me to pinpoint to one what i would say every single employer looks for is when they're recruiting someone, they look for who's going to turn up, who's going to work hard, who's going to be like a sponge and want to listen and learn. And no matter what I throw at them, they're just going to have a go. So I would say the skills around 
you know, you, it's not even a skill, is it? You know, attendance and punctuality, but being that person who'll be dead approachable and was willing to learn and willing to grow and willing to develop. And if you're one of them people with nice customer service and you're approachable, I promise you a good employer to work for will teach you the rest. So if you don't know, if you want to be an electrician and you don't know anything about electricians, um, if you turn up to a business with wanting to work hard and be dynamic and be ambitious and be kind, that business will absolutely, that business will absolutely invest in you because it's easy to teach someone how to do something when they want to be taught. So wanting to learn and wanting to grow and wanting to develop, they're the bits that people need. And when people come to the learning foundry, if if you if, if for any reason in your life you've you've not engaged with school and you've not had a good start trying to help you find that trust to want to learn and develop again that's the biggest skill you'll get because when you get into that business you'll be absolutely flying this one wasn't written by me as well just so you know okay. like, can we have more elaboration of the x for apprenticeships Should I just google it and tell you some of the <laughs> um some of the criteria let's find it um okay i can do this i'm sure there's going to be a unit on health and safety in there if there isn't then that's going to be a bit of a worry isn't it let's have a little look that's going yeah so definitely on um health and safety communication because i guess if you don't communicate very well you're going to um going to end up with an axe in the back of your head equipment maintenance and safety checks managing bookings and diaries responding to customers on the phone so you can see there um invoicing customers um so it looks like here it's not just it's about the arrival the health and safety uh, and it says here um the ideal candidate will need good communication skills and the ability to work as part of a team. So there's another example where you don't need to know anything about throwing an ax. You just need good customer service and want to work as part of a team. And when you go on that apprenticeship, they will teach you all the rest. You've got transferable skills there in ax throwing. I like it. Absolutely. Um, New career for everyone. I know. Is there any other questions from anyone? I think that might be it, you know. I think we're over the last question i think you got up quite nicely um I'd, i'll ask one more if anyone wants to think of any others while i'm just asking it but i was just curious you know like obviously being a young person a young air person younger than me anyway in your position uh, have you ever encountered any sort of like negative reactions from anyone who you've come up against and you know whether you've how you've sort of encountered that and how you've dealt with it yeah so i wouldn't really call it negative um but I remember I used to always go to meetings with colleagues. So I'd go into meetings um, and I remember my colleagues used to be talking to someone for like 10 minutes into a meeting and the colleagues would be looking as if to say they're asking me all the questions and not even looking at you or acknowledging you. Uh, and they would never, they'd always look at me like I was the apprentice or the trainee. But you know what, 10 minutes into the meeting, I'd soon showed them that why I've got that job. And I suppose that's why I've always worked really hard to be really knowledgeable and, and to be really determined to show people that. I think I think for me, um, the first, up until not very long ago, maybe only a year or two ago, ago, I used to always feel like a bit of a fraud in my job. And I used to always think, oh my gosh, why have I got this job? Am I good enough? There's so many more experienced people around here that, than me. Um, so I used to always say to people, Oh, I've just been dead lucky. And for 10 years, I always said it. Oh, I've just been dead lucky. I've always just been in the right place at the right time. And then it was only about a year or two years ago, I stopped saying it where I thought, all right, everywhere there's always going to be an element of luck, isn't there? And we all have an element of luck in our life or bad luck. And then I stopped saying it and, that, and then I used to say, no, I'm here because I deserve it. Stop saying you're lucky, Joe, because you're just kind of trying to make excuses when it's been hard work. A lot of hard work, by the way. The you know determination. A lot of tough times along the way as well. A lot of a lot of hard work, and um, because you don't get there doing nothing. So I would say to that to that rich, I probably put a lot of the negativity on myself, trying to justify how I'd got there at that point, rather than just sitting there and saying, do you know what? Yeah, you had you you 
you did good with your career you made you had some good choices that you didn't mean to make that you made but actually Joe, you did this because you made it happen so I don't be negative anymore and I'm really really confident in my abilities now sometimes I have a bit of a wobble but I, I reckon that only came a year or two ago yeah anyone who spent 10 minutes in your company knows how hard you work as well i think when you came in here and i think you stopped all the time you're here, but that's it that's brilliant uh, joe i think that's it for the questions to be honest so i'll just leave it by saying thanks so much for joining us and telling us all about it and just as well if anyone is watching this online um, and has any questions a bit like last year or questions about friendships or anything like that uh, feel free to get in touch with me um, and I'll be happy to pass those questions on to either Joe or to the Learning Foundry, depending on who's you know, most relevant to, to answer it. So my email address is just richard at thrive-cic.co.uk. Other than that, thanks everyone for joining us and, and thanks to you as well, Joe. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone Take care, for everyone. coming.